Welcome to Module 15 in this series of lectures on Statistical Quality Assurance and Statistical Process Improvement. We're discussing two-way analysis of variance and its application to gauge R&R &R studies. In the previous module, we provided some simple range-based methods for processing R&R &R data. In this module, we're going to prepare to use so-called ANOVA calculations for the reason that the ANOVA-based calculations are generally more effective than the range-based calculations, and they also lend themselves to providing uh, confidence limits for the quantities of interest in an R&R &R study in a way that range-based calculations do not. Uh, those confidence limits give us some idea not only what our best guess at uh, important measures, uh, what, what our best guesses are, but some idea of how good those guesses are. A careful treatment of analysis of variance uh, is beyond the scope of this discussion. Rather, what we intend to do here is to basically make use of the main outputs of uh, two-way analysis of variance calculations uh, and use those outputs uh, as the, the raw material for making uh, gauge R&R inferences. Uh, if, a, if, if a listener is, is interested in this uh, the subject, knowing more about this subject, there's plenty of uh, material available in almost any intermediate level uh, statistics text, uh, text like uh, Vardaman's Statistics for Engineering Problem Solving or Vardaman and Job's uh, Basic Engineering Data Collection and Analysis. The main output of a two-way analysis, two-way analysis of variance uh, comp calculation applied to data like those from a, a, a gauge R&R &R study uh, is a so-called analysis of variance table. And that analysis of variance table has so-called sums of squares, degrees of freedom, and mean squares. Those mean squares are the degrees are the sums of squares divided by degrees of freedom and basically although the table doesn't usually include a mean square for total if one took the sum of squares for total and divided it by uh, that degrees of freedom one would have the sample variance of all of the data values and the table manages a breakdown of these sums of squares and these degrees of freedom into interpretable pieces. Uh, the first of which is a mean square for parts or items that's essentially a sample variance of row averages in uh, the table a mean square for B that is essentially a sample average of, sorry, the simple, is essentially a sample variance of column averages uh, in the table. A mean square for error that is essentially a pooled sample variance gotten from the uh, I times J uh, different cells of the gauge R and R table. Uh, we're going to point at uh, the output of statistical uh, software that produces these tables and simply make use of these uh, so-called mean squares in, that, in the table. The example that we're going to use is one that was used in module 12. Uh, it's the data set from the in-class R&R study that had uh, four parts, three operators, and two measurements per 
uh, part operator combination. We're going to uh, make use of jump output, although essentially any standard statistical program would, would produce the uh, calculations uh, like the ones that we're, that we're going to illustrate here. Here's the jump data table uh, for, the, for, the data, for the data set. Uh, if one fills in the jump dialog box uh, for fit model in the way that is shown above, making sure that both parts and operators are treated as categorical variables and that the measurements are or Ys are treated as continuous variables and that one has as factors part operator and part by operator uh, and then presses go. What is produced is a jump report that has all of these pieces that, that we're going to need. Uh, there is a root mean squared error that is the square root of MSE in uh, this setup here, if one was to take the square root of that value for the data set uh, under discussion here, uh, that value is located across from root mean squared error. Uh, this analysis of variance table uh, again has the MSE in it which is the square of that. And then there is a quote unquote effects test part of this output uh, that has sources, parts, operator, and parts by operator. That corresponds to this part operator, part by operator, uh, these rows of the analysis of variance table, uh, the standard analysis of variance table. There are sums of squares, uh, and if one takes those sums of squares and, divided, and divides them by uh, the degrees of freedom, one gets the mean squares listed in the table, the general two-way analysis of variance table. Uh, it's possible to get these calculations done not only using a standard statistical program but even using Excel. Uh, I don't recommend that. Uh, one really should use statistical software to do statistics. Uh, Excel is a fine tool for what it's intended to do but it's not really intended to do statistical analysis. It does not have great numerical uh, analysis properties. Nevertheless, um, there is a two-way ANOVA plugin for the uh, Excel spreadsheet, and there are instructions, for example, on how to use that program's uh, two-way ANOVA plugin uh, at the URL listed here. Uh, using those instructions, uh, filling in the appropriate dialog box as shown here after uh, putting the same data into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, it's possible to get uh, this output and that output lines up with the jump output in the, uh, the general two-way ANOVA table uh, that was on the, on the the second or third slide of this of this presentation. Uh, again, for our present purposes, uh, we're going to take out of a table like this mean squares and degrees of freedom and use them to make gauge R and R estimates. Uh, and those are the subject of the next of these lectures.